In this video, we take a look at random number generation. There are many situations and types of programs in computer science where you may need or want to generate a random number. We provided a few examples here, simulating the role of a dice generating a random set of coordinates, any form of gambling game or simulation, for example, the National Lottery, quiz programs so we could select a random question from a list or a bank of questions. And indeed, random number generation is used in a whole host of cryptography style programs. So in order to study random numbers in a little more detail in this video, we're going to take the example of a program here that deals with dice written in Python. So you'll notice the first line of this program starts by importing what's known as the random library of functions. And this is important as without importing this library, we wouldn't be able to execute the three lines of code that come next. The next three lines then generate three random numbers. And this will be different based on the programming language you're using. But in Python, the lines of code we have here generate numbers in the range one to six inclusive. So we're simulating the role of a dice and it assigns each of those numbers to a separate variable. You're now free to use those stored random numbers as you see fit in the rest of the program. So as we've said, as a quick recap, there's many situations when you might want to generate a random number and we've provided a few there so you can remember those for the exam. If presented using AQA's exam pseudocode, they will show random numbers as follows. Random in capital letters underscore int. They'll then open the brackets and have two parameters. They are the range of numbers that will be generated. So here it would generate a random number between two and five inclusively. And then you obviously need to assign or store that result somewhere to a variable on the left. Obviously, if you're having to write high language specific code in your exam, then you'll need to use the correct version of random number generation that you've been programming with. Well, that's certainly all you need to know about random number generation for the GCSE exam, but this is actually quite a fascinating and interesting topic. So if you wanted to know a little more, you can put down the pen and stop taking notes and watch the rest of this video. So you may be wondering how a computer system is actually able to generate a random number. Where does this randomness actually come from? By their very nature, computers are what we call deterministic. And by this, we mean the computer works with algorithms and algorithms, of course, are just pieces of code. So how truly random can a number generated by an algorithm be? Is it somehow possible to predict a sequence of so-called random numbers if they've been generated by a computer? So to understand this a little bit better, it's important to understand the difference between pseudo random numbers versus true random numbers. Now, for almost all situations that you'd be using, generating a pseudo random number is enough. So if we ran this simple code below, so for i equals 0 to 9, print a random number between 1 and 100. So in other words, chuck me out 10 random numbers between 1 and 100. And if I ran that code, it might indeed appear to do just that. And we can see an output window. You'd actually find though, that if we ran that code multiple times, it would generate the exact same sequence of seemingly random numbers every time. So it's clearly following some pattern and these so-called random numbers could be predicted. Pseudo random number generators need to be supplied with what we call a seed value. Now, this is a value which changes every time the algorithm is run. 
the value is taken in or plugged into the random number algorithm and is then used in the calculation to alter the list of random numbers generated. One typical example which has been used by people in the past is to use what is known as the Unix epoch time each time the random function is called. Now the Unix epoch time is the number of seconds that have elapsed since January the 1st 1970 at midnight, not counting leap seconds. So at the precise moment of writing this sentence for this video, the Unix epoch time was 157.615.7485. So we use the code below to generate a sequence of 10 random numbers and at the precise moment we call random, the seed value is passed in. That gets used in the calculation and generates the sequence of random numbers that you see in the output window. When I run the program again later, a different seed value is passed in. So the output now generates a different sequence of random numbers. Now as mentioned there's also something called true random numbers. Now generating true random numbers is actually a lot more difficult which is why most of the time we're happy to use a seed value and just generate pseudo random numbers. But for more secure situations like cryptography, generating encryption keys, we need to be able to generate truly random sequence of numbers. Now to generate a true random number, we require what's known as entropy. In other words, seemingly random data from the physical world. It can't be anything generated by the computer internally. One example is can a, a computer could measure the radioactive decay of an atom turn that into data and then use that as its method for generating random numbers. The slash dev slash random device on Linux, which is responsible for generating random numbers, actually blocks the user and doesn't return a random number until it gathers enough entropy. You can see a prompt here on the screen. It's saying generating your key. When creating your key, we need to generate a lot of random data please perform some random actions like typing on the keyboard or moving the mouse. There is no way the random number algorithm can predict exactly when you will type keys, the distance between them, the timing which keys you'll press. Your performance are random. It can analyse this data and feed it into its algorithm to generate a truly random number.